So now that I feel like I've made progress with my takeaway, it's not perfect by any means, but I definitely feel like I've made progress from those really slow, intentional swings on the range to the dry drills, to really just getting the rips in on that move. I feel like it's in a good position. So now it's time to work on the next step of my backswing, and that is fixing my overswing. And I've just noticed over time that I've never really had solid compression with my iron shot. So I really wanna work on that to become a better ball striker across my bag. But I'm gonna focus on irons in my practice today, sticking with a seven iron. And I'm gonna use a drill, which I've got a little cheeky stick in my back pocket here. I've gone for a tiny alignment stick. I'm not sure if this is too tiny, but I felt like the long ones that I've got, which are sort of the, the 48 inches, might be a little bit too long. Because what I'm gonna do is really try and train myself in my backswing to stop when my arms touch the stick. Because as we'll see, and I'll get some swings in without any sticks just to get a bit of a baseline of data for us with my seven iron. And you'll see that at the top of my swing, I just go really long. I end up sort of getting to a good spot, but then the right arm lifts, disconnects from the body and over she goes. So I really want to focus on building that control building a, a shorter backswing so that I can have just less work to do. Because if you think, if I've gone all the way over here to get the club back, there's a lot of work to do between here and getting the club back to the ball. Whereas if I can have a more controlled backswing, it's just hopefully a simpler downswing. And that will hopefully help me create more consistency and more compression with my iron shots. So let's give it a go. Let's get into this drill and see how we get on. So I'm just gonna start with getting some seven iron swings in without thinking too much about my backswing. I really wanna try and just execute my normal swing as it stands right now so that hopefully we can see a difference between the baseline swings that we're gonna get here and some data and then what my swing looks like in a few weeks or maybe even a month as I document working on this drill, really sticking with it over the next few weeks and hopefully we'll get to see some difference. I felt long at the top there. It's funny how already, just becoming more aware of it, I can spot when I feel I've got a little bit loose at the top, but that is a good thing. That's what we're gonna be working on. That was another long one, I could feel it. Off she goes. Okay, this is good though. I'm not gonna get hung up on the misses. We're just trying to get a sense of how long my swing is at the moment and what the difference might be when we can make it a little bit shorter. And again, these are the type of shots, to be honest, that I probably would see on the course. I can find myself having like a really good run where you just manage to hit your target or hit the green. And these aren't so destructive when we actually look at where they're landing, but it's just the, the shape of it isn't consistent. And I think that's what I'm really striving for to become a better ball striker is a sense of consistency in my swing as much as possible. Obviously, it's not going to be bang on all the time, but I just want a little bit more repeatability than what I feel I've got at the moment. Oh, I could feel that one was really long. It's like I make the full turn and just carry on. It's really interesting. It's like I, I get to hear the body can't turn anymore. So the arm, arms sort of think, I think we'll just carry on, you know, rather than stay, stay attached to the body a little bit more. One more, give us a good bit of data. That was a bit clunky. We'll take that one to finish. So we've got the five shots there. And I think overall, what I would take from that to think about what I want to make progress with, with this practice, with this drill, and what I would love to see in say a few weeks time after really sticking to this drill that I'm about to share with you on the range, when I'm hitting balls, I'm gonna really focus on just going through the process of making this change. Because I think without that focus, I can just find myself not aimlessly hitting balls necessarily, but obviously just using the swing that I've just swung there, I'd be still grooving in the habit at the top of the swing if I'm not intentionally trying to work on it and improve it when I'm on the range which I think that for me now I've almost very much separated the range and the course which I think is key and something I need to get better at but that I have made progress with is really seeing the range as the, as the place to do the thinking and the really intentional swing work and the course being the place to just play with what you've got on the day and trust that you've put in the work that it will then show on the course. That might not be immediately, but you will know it's coming because you're doing the work on the range. And so for me, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna grab the stick that we're gonna be working with. You can see the difference quite a bit between the uh, alignment stick lengths here. So I feel like I've got a bit more of a magician's wand than an alignment stick going on here, but hopefully it will do the job. The reason I went for a slightly shorter one is just because when I was using the longer stick under the arm, 
it felt quite restrictive. So I felt I was very aware of not hitting it. I couldn't sort of move fluidly. And that obviously then impacts how you feel in your, in your swing and on the range. And I think that's when it gets to the point where if it feels like it's not helping, I almost end up thinking, okay, well then I'll just try and without the stick, make a short backswing, which I know from my videos that I've watched back when I film myself on the range, I can't seem to control my backswing. As much as I try, I cannot seem to keep it as short as I want to. So I know I need something physical to give me the feedback when I've reached the top of my swing. So the goal with this stick is I'm just gonna have it under the arm. I'm gonna really sort of tuck it under the armpit there because obviously I need all the length I can coming out of this tiny stick. But mainly the goal is that when I make the swing, as I make my backswing, my, my left arm is going to touch the stick when I get to what feels like the top of my swing. And although that's going to feel really short to me, like it really does feel like I'm almost making almost a nine o'clock swing there, I know in motion that's going to go further. But also what I'm focused on is the fact that I know the overswing and the collapse at the top of my swing is happening because when my body's made the full turn, my arm seems to carry on. And so obviously if it does that with the stick there, I'm gonna drop the stick. So I've got two bits of feedback. One, if the stick falls out, I know that my arm's disconnected from my body, but in a way. But two, I know that if, when I, with the left arm, reach the stick, I know that's the trigger to start my downswing. And that's my goal with doing these drills. I'm just gonna start really slow, like I've done before, start really slow and sort of build up. But my goal is to create that feeling of a trigger for myself, to build awareness that when I feel the stick on my left arm, create a feeling of maybe that's chin to shoulder, for example, or shoulder to chin, I should say, that that is then, oh, off she goes, look at that. Even in a dry drill, I'm disconnecting. So, oh gosh, that's, that's interesting, isn't it? So there, I know when I reach here, for example, I want to feel that connection, but also I want to create a trigger for myself, which is maybe, yeah, that sense of when my shoulder reaches my chin, I'm then going to start my downswing. So that obviously I can't be swinging with this stick when I'm on the course, but I want to just be building that habit, getting the feeling grooved in, getting the reps in, like I talk about in my practice plan. This is all about that practice routine. Get the reps in, finding the feeling, grooving the move, so that hopefully we can build that muscle memory and see progress, not perfection, but ch just chase a little bit of progress with each session and each swing that we make as well. Even actually just a few dry drills to feel when that stick touches my arm and blend the takeaway work that I've been doing as well and then just go really slow. So now I'm not worried about the data too much. I'm not worried about you know how far it goes or anything like that. I'm just focused on the feeling at this point. Okay, stick didn't fall out. Strike sounded better, but she's out to the, to the right a little bit there. But again, we're not worried about that right now. It's so hard not to be, especially when you're on the range and you think, oh gosh, I've just sent it off to the right. But I'm just focused on really trying to build that awareness and build that control in the top of my backswing. I'm also very sort of aware that what might happen is I'm gonna hit some fat because of the throwing, which I've had to do to save this long backswing, to throw the club out, sort of get back to the ball. That's obviously a habit that I've got used to as well to sort of save my swing, which means that I'm probably going to catch a little bit of mat before ball, but that's okay. Or just really thin. One thing I'm noticing here actually is it is sort of making me feel a bit funny in the old follow through. So I want to try and swing freely after I've touched the stick and not worry about the stick dropping after. It's just making sure it doesn't drop at the top. Oh, I've done it again. Stayed a bit too stiff in the downswing. Bit chunky. And I think this is the challenge when you're making changes like this. Like I find if I go to the range, I can get conscious, you know, self-conscious. If I'm hitting shots that I'm not super happy with and it's really sticking with the process because you know that there is going to be that sort of time where you feel like you've taken 10 steps back, but knowing that that work to override our default tendencies and the, the moves that we make in our swing that mean that they're not maybe as consistent or repeatable as we want them to be. It's really sticking with that process and knowing that over time there will be progress. But in the moment, it can feel quite frustrating when you think you're sort of catching them fat or hitting them all out to the right. 
and it's easy to just slip back to our previous swing and we've got to stick with it. Stick with the process. And I'm hoping these are shorter, they feel shorter, but this again could be where I would look back and actually I'm still somehow managing to get a real full swing in there with a bit of the overswing. That felt nicer. These are feeling nicer actually. I feel like I'm getting through the ball better because I think that's one thing where I've been getting a little bit loose at the top. I've also felt looser impact, just not solid, not covering the ball as much as I want to. And sometimes those strikes will come out, especially if I'm maybe doing more of a feely number or say taking a little bit off of a club. I'll notice that my strike is a lot more compressed than if I'm say doing a full swing. But again, it's just trying to get to that place where by working on my backswing, building that trigger of when I get to the top, I know that my body and arms are more connected than they currently are with me getting a little bit lifty, lifty loosey at the top. But if I know that by building this, the feedback with this stick, building that feeling and that trigger of shoulder to chin is what like, starts the downswing. Hopefully that over time will then creep through my swing and mean that with less work to do to get the club back from this, this long and loose position, I am gonna see more consistency, more compression, and just become a better ball striker because that is my goal. I just really want to become a solid ball striker with a swing that feels repeatable because I think having not sort of been in the, the game of golf that long, I know that I've ingrained some habits that I just have to unpick and work on. And I think for me, that challenge is all about looking back at the swing that got me to single figures. It was not technically perfect by any means, really over the top, really out to in, very, very steep, very different, I think, hopefully to what my swing looks like now. But I feel like there's still work to do, which is really exciting, because you think then if I can get to this place of having made progress with the takeaway, if I can build on that now with the top of the backswing, by doing these slow swings with the stick in there, and even doing this with dry drills at home, really building that awareness of that control at the top of my backswing, hopefully that will then mean that the swing itself from a downswing perspective is a lot simpler and something that I then maybe don't have to think about so much because I'm, I'm having to do less work from the top and from that position of being a little bit long and a little bit loose with an overswing. So I'm gonna carry on, but in the meantime, I would love to hear what's one thing that you're working on in your swing at the minute. When you go to the range, what's your number one thing that you're trying to work on in your swing? I would love to hear, and maybe even the drill that you're using as well to help make that move happen. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you there.